recording. Hey friends, I'm here with Lee Jackson from Agency Trailblazer and Agency Transformation. And I'm really happy that he took the time to dive into his Airtable account because Airtable is something that I'm playing around with for like task management, CRM, and all sorts of database, data management stuff. And Lee is a wizard with Airtable. So thanks for taking the time, Lee, to walk us through it. Hey, mate. It's uh, absolutely my pleasure. You happy for me to dive in? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So uh, you should be able to see my screen right now? Yep. Epic. All right. So you can see we've got quite a lot of bases. So the, the idea here is we're using Airtables as a kind of spreadsheet on steroids for our business. And that gives us the ability to track a whole load of data, but also to report on that data and also to be able to create documentation. And we've got quite a few different use cases for it. Um, the, the biggest thing for us is the fact that this acts almost like an access database online because it's interrelational. You can use spreadsheets, which is great on, say, Google or on Microsoft 365, but that ability to be able to relate data and to create reports, et cetera, although possible, is just not as easy. There's a lot of training. There's a lot of Googling you've got to do. So for us, we really like using Airtable for a lot of this. So what I'll do is, mate, is I'll show you through um, a few of uh, the different types of bases that we've got. You can see here we've got quite a lot. We've got a little naming convention going on so that we can group things together. And you'll also see on the left-hand side that we have a lot of workspaces. One of them is the pro workspace, which means we get access to the blocks, et cetera. Uh, and then the other ones are free workspaces that we've got, which don't give us access to the blocks and some of the extra colorization features, but still allow us to track and manage data and share stuff with our clients, et cetera. Um, a lot of companies, to be honest, will get away with the free version of Airtable because they're really generous. Yeah, um, I'm on that free provide. version as well right now. Yeah, yeah, it's very impressive. Um, for us, we wanted to be able to use the blocks, and I'll show you why. Um, and we also wanted to uh, be able to use the colorization and just some of those extra features. And equally, I'm one of those people as well that if a product is adding tons and tons of value and it's free, I kind of feel like I have to find a tier to pay for so that I feel better. I feel like I'm <laughs> supporting the application. So uh, like I said, I, I can't scroll too far down because there are a few companies in there that uh, I have NDAs with, but uh, you can see here we have a whole load of different types of content, including strategy, et cetera. And the first thing I'll show you is just what we use for uh, the up and coming agency transformation live 2020. Um, you can see here that we're already building out um, our entire agenda. Uh, so we have our agenda here. It's grouped. We can create multiple views. So I can just see day one. So day one's web view uh, essentially gives us what is currently showing on the website. And I can actually embed this if I pop that out, which I won't because it will show you a private link. Um, but I can actually show that um, and embed that on my website or I can send people a direct link in. What I can also do as well is send forms out to all of these speakers through this for them to submit all of their speaker information as well. So that might be their PowerPoint presentation, et cetera. And that's exactly what we did last time in 2019. So we set up the agenda, we sent up all of the, uh, the, the, the um, uh, who was doing what within the event, every single, in fact, I'll show you the run sheet. Uh, we set up this run sheet so we knew exactly what slide was happening. So this is 2019 down to the minute, you know, five minutes, uh, you know, we had <laughs> five Duration, seconds. We knew yeah. that this, this, uh, we knew that this was going to go up and on. Uh, th this particular slide would be up for the last five minutes, et cetera, et cetera, so that we had an entire build. And because everyone had it on their um, apps as well, um, we had certain people who were responsible for checking off each and every section as we went through the entire day. What that also did for us, which is why we've got the premium features, is obviously it gave us things like the colorization so we could see when things were completed, et cetera, and we could uh, filter things. But also it gave us the ability uh, to create these sorts of document documents. So this is the all the related records. But if I actually click and expand on the document itself, you, uh, obviously, I've deleted the logo because we've redesigned it, but you can see here a quite a nice, clean document, uh, which gives us everything that somebody needs to use. So for us, it was a complete no-brainer to just go ahead and um, use this and print it out on a decent printer so that everybody had a program. Um, so the data was there and we could export it. Alternatively, you can put it through the API as well and send it to a printer, export it, do whatever you want. But for us, because things were changing right up until a couple of days beforehand, we just had everything in here and then we just simply 
printed it all off on a nice high quality high grade laser printer um, so that everybody had uh, a copy of what was going on we also had like a run sheet version of this as well so that we had not only the app version of the run sheet uh, for people who were using the apps or who were using the computer but also we had printed versions of the run sheet down here as well we were also able to create other um, things that I can't obviously show you, uh, which include things like uh, email templates that would go out to the speakers, exhibitors, and sponsors, etc., cetera, um, for information. So there's a request for information, et cetera. Uh, and also you can see here the finance as well. So what we did was when people would buy a ticket through our WooCommerce shopping cart, because WooCommerce and Airtables integrate really well with Zapier, that allowed us to have a sale come in through WooCommerce. That would then um, be picked up by Zapier or Zapier, however you pronounce it, and it would actually put that into here, into our sales. Uh, pipeline here um, so it would record it it would create a ticket for them inside of here so we knew what ticket we had what ID number they had what invoice number they had used to pay etc but also what it went ahead and did was then put it into QuickBooks as well which is our accounts package and it would also then record the payment against the Stripe account so it automatically nice. reconciled so it gave us an entire flow one of which ex that we've exactly mirrored for 2020's events so that happens in the other air table that we have for 2020 uh, so every time someone buys a ticket and it goes and we've we've got it all set up and ready and we can instantly then click on the finance tab to do financial reporting we can see you know what's our costs how much sponsorship have we had in are we still in the red you know how events are you're in the red for a very long time until eventually yeah. you know it then hopefully creeps above and starts to go green so you know i can see what's going on etc so that's been particularly useful for us to manage events or manage things with a lot of data and get information in from other people Another thing that we've been able to use uh, Airtable for, which is really good fun, is actually for discovery. Um, so for, for going through that discovery process with a client and helping them understand um, how each one of those uh, kind of sections work. So if you see here, um, we've got this journey breakdown. Let me just talk to you a little bit about our discovery process. What we will do is, and this is our checklist, is we will go through with a client and say, all right, you want a new website building. So first of all, we're going to meet up and we're going to define all the terms that your industry uses. So you see this, we've got our defined terms. Then we're going to establish the users of the platform that they want creating. We're then going to list all of the possible journeys that that user is going to go on. Perhaps they're going to buy something. Perhaps they're going to make an inquiry. Perhaps the admin is going to pick and pack or whatever all those journeys are. Then what we'll do is then start to match those journeys out, etc. So you can see here that what we've done throughout the Airtable is we We've given ourselves a checklist at the top to ensure that we can go through the process and then we work our way through here um, to go through all of those elements. So we might define, first of all, what all the terms are. Then we will establish all of the users who will be using the system, what they will be doing, what their position is, um, what terms might be related as well to those users. Then we'll start to list out the journeys. So perhaps someone might register as a candidate. This is obviously an example. Uh, so there's not actually that much in it. Um, so, you know, their journey might be they'll register as a candidate. And then what we can do is we can relate all of the different actions that will be needed for that person to then register as a candidate. So they'll fill in the registration form, receive an email, blah, de, blah, de, blah. And we can also see who's who's touched or what users are affected and what system that is, that's going to be applied to. Now, the cool thing about doing it this way is it's super easy for us to then work through our entire discovery process with a client. And it automatically, as you can see here, creates the document for us. So yeah. we, we now have a document by the end of the meeting that we've not really had to write because we've just been filling in um, elements of Airtable and then it's built up the entire document. And then once we've done that, we can then start to do things like these really cool Gantt charts where we can work out, all right, phase one is going to take us how long, et cetera. Uh, and we can relate that to data. So you can essentially use this as your entire CRM system, your entire project management system, your finance system, your running an event system, your grocery list. Like it is ridiculous what you can do with this. Um, here's another example that we were showing where we did a, a version of, um, for Event Engine, which is our other business, you can see just an example of what a, uh, a run sheet might look like, etc., using all of the activity that's going on. Um, now, I mentioned earlier that you could use it as a CRM as well. 
and I'll shut up in a minute so you can ask me questions, but I just wanted to show you these core ones. Um, and uh, with any uh, opportunity, you might want to take that through a process. Maybe it's an inquiry, you've got needs analysis, you've got negotiation and review, et cetera, and you want to take it through those stages. So here you can see an example of a, in fact, there's an entire video on this. I'll if remember, I'll send you the link to it so they can watch it on YouTube. Um, and you can actually clone this template that I have here. Uh, so what this is, is essentially a starter pack for an agency to be able to manage their entire business. So you can manage all of the opportunities that come in and take them through those processes. You can also manage the projects that you have and your deliverables uh, with regards to that project. Um, you've got all the task management that would happen. So your priority tasks, et cetera, that can then all be filtered by your different users, your different collaborators. You also have the ability to create your own invoices, um, obviously manage your contacts. Um, you've got your company management, which is all the companies and the contacts that are related. And then also we have our tax brackets because here in the UK, the VAT sometimes changes. So this is our current VAT it might change in the near future. So this is an entire basic system that replaces the need for any software out there. If you already have your processes nailed and you just need to create something um, that works to match your processes, then uh, Airtable, again, is just that kind of perfect delivery system for creating something that works for you. Downsides would be that often when you click on, say, Elmer Fudd here, it's not pretty. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of information here. It's, you know... The, I, I, I think you can hide certain things. I, I haven't really bothered. So it, it's not necessarily user-friendly sometimes. Um, but for a lot of us, you know, we're quite technical. We get what our processes are, et cetera. So for us, all we need to do is be able to see the data and, and then obviously be able to, you know, create all of these different reports. Here's a, yeah. a, an example of an opportunity report here that we've got based on this data here. Uh, so we can see that uh, we've won 10, uh, well, what have we won? What's on? All right, so we yeah we can see here we've got 10k in the pipeline, etc. If we go to was it documentation? Uh, yeah, this is an example of a logo. Uh, no, uh, sorry, an example of an invoice. Uh, invoice that you could send. Let's just take a look at that. Actually, how easy that was to design. So. There's your logo, there's your data that's being brought through. These are the line items, they're the deliverables against the project. Um, and then obviously you can see your total with the addition of VAT and all that sort of stuff as well. And you can throw in your bank term details and all that sort of stuff. So it's ridiculously easy to, to add these blocks in. The other thing as well that you can do is do things like for the premium, you can do things like track time as well. So um, I could actually track time on a particular record um, do the work and then log that. Uh, and also there's a cool little search. There's tons of blocks in here as well that kind of take it beyond. So you can do an organization chart if you're doing hierarchical. We've done the organization chart in uh, very often in our discovery because what we will do is design the database almost inside of Airtable where we will relate records to each other and then that will give us a nice hierarchical chart which essentially shows us the structure of the database or of the modules etc um obviously we use the the gantt chart a lot um so that we can kind of see what our upcoming schedule is but there are all sorts of different ways of visualizing your data you've got charts maps um add extra lists and all that sort of stuff a lot of which we've not really used because we've not needed to because the <laughs> basics are pretty damn good anyway. But for us, it's we've used for definite Gantt charts a lot. Summaries are really useful for us to be able to see things yeah. at a glance. Uh, organization charts, etc. Um, I am coming into land, mate. Um, <laughs> so you can see as well, to create all of this is ridiculously easy. I can right click and I can customize any of these fields or I can add a new field. So let's just get rid of the blocks. And I just want to show you as an example, if I go over to say the invoice, you can see that these have a weird kind of icon on them. That means that they're a roll up field. What that means is they are a, 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 a calculation of all of these related deliverables. So if I look at these deliverables, all of these deliverables have got a sum, um, you know, what their rate is and what the total price is, et cetera. So you can see here there are two widgets at £100 each, therefore the total is 100 If we then see that our tax type is of 5% because it's a particular type, if I hit customize field, you can see that there is just a very simple Excel style um, yeah. calculation there to then give us our total uh, with the tax, et cetera. So we're applying tax to that. And then that will go out into our in invoice. The roll up field, therefore, is essentially all of those related records added together. And then we have our subtotal, which is before tax, and then our total, which is with that 
uh, extra 5% on that one line item. So that gives you the ability to get really, really techy. Equally though, you know, it's, um, it's just point and click, you know, I can right click or I can just add a new field, do basic Excel calculations if I need to. And then obviously you can see that this data is grouped. So you can add tons of grouping to give yourself a cleaner look and feel. Um, so for example, I might want to clone this particular view uh, and change it um, so that it's only showing me companies in the UK and it's showing me less fields so that that's the view I could then share with other people. I might have the bigger complicated view as the accountant, but then I might give a simplified view uh, to the rest of my team, etc. So you can create multiple views and I'm, I feel like I'm not even showing you the tip of the iceberg, mate, uh, of what <laughs> this could do. So that's yeah, kind of what we're using it for. You, do you want to hit me with questions? Absolutely. That, that, that's a very powerful tool. And actually that agency management system is exactly what I was trying to replicate in Airtable. Yeah. And I have a somewhat similar approach to you. I uh, didn't know about that template yet, so I'll definitely give that a try. One thing that made me go back to a regular project management tool over to managing tasks in Airtable was the ability to being reminded when tasks are due. So is there like, something that I'm missing um, when it comes to executing tasks to see like what task I have scheduled for today, tomorrow, the upcoming week and stuff like that. And sure. So there's a few things you can do there. Uh, so we, we've managed tasks in here for, oh, for quite a while. Can you still hear me? I just knocked yeah. the microphone. Cool. Um, so you can see here, this is an example task. You can set a date due. You can also set a date time due. And what you can do is you can create a calendar view of your tasks. Uh, so we're going to use, say, the, the date field here. Yeah. And what you can then do is actually have people subscribe. So you can subscribe to this calendar to have this calendar visible inside of your uh, Outlook or your Gmail or whatever. So if you add this calendar, you then have a view outside of here and you can set notifications up that way then to tell you if a task is due because you can set a start and a finish oh, nice. date and time. So yeah. you could actually plan out the, the particular tasks that you need to start what time uh, and then be notified of them, et cetera. So, yeah. and you can create this particular view based on you, your, so you could say that this will only show anything that is assigned to Jan, which means that when you then subscribe to this view, you will only get your tasks up in your calendar view on your computer or whatever yeah. kind of software you're using. Um, you can also use Zapier and do triggered notifications, which you can then set to send you an email. Um, so when a record changes its status to whatever or when a date is now, um, then trigger an email and it'll send you an email, etc. So obviously nice. that's not... Um, it's not clean, is it? Like, say, ClickUp, which is automatic because that's yeah. a project management system. But at the same time, Airtables isn't meant to be a, project management. the finished system. It's meant to be the yeah. tools to allow you to create the finished system that you need. So perhaps an enterprise or a, a company that's got very specific needs would want to use something like Airtable uh, to manage their business as opposed to um, you know, a done-for-you system. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, I think that... Um we always have to keep in mind that Airtable is like a spreadsheet on steroids. It's not meant to be a fully task management system. Mm -hmm. um, Although it can be. <laughs> it it can be. You yeah. can't have collaboration though. I mean, that is a downside. So um, we can collaborate internally. So say you're in my uh, workspace, we can collaborate internally. But if I've got uh, the pro account and I want clients to come in and collaborate on particular tasks, uh, they can't unless they have paid accounts. And that means it could get very expensive. There are ways around yeah. that where you can at least create forms for them to submit feedback, which will push data into the system. Um, but there's no kind of ability without paying to get them in and get them collaborating, et cetera. But yeah. again, for us, that's not a problem because we don't really want our clients in our project management system. We want to give them the views that only we want them to see, um, which is the Gantt chart, which they can see publicly and a few other pieces of information so that they, have, you know, they are having a regular update, but they're not actually messing around inside of our system. Yeah. Is there any, anything that you found wasn't possible to replicate with Airtable? Any, hmm. any roadblocks you faced? Anything that wasn't possible. I mean, there are a few things probably um, that you, you like the, 
The one thing I haven't worked out is things like reoccurring tasks, but I do believe that somebody has put a video on YouTube to show you yeah, how to I, do I, that. I saw a video like that on YouTube. Yeah. 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 So there are ways of doing things like recurring tasks. Um, so I've not yet worked it out and not really needed it necessarily. Uh, but you know, there, there are certain things that are probably more complicated to do. Uh, however, um, is it this one? What's what I forgot to show you was that uh, this particular element here, this is something that we've integrated with Zapier, um, which allows us to paste in um, and hit as published our um, up and coming podcast episodes, etc. And using Zapier, it'll automatically post it out across all social media. I actually did a video on that as well. I should probably share that with you. Um, nice. So, because I, I wanted to, you know, I thought it wouldn't be able to do this. Um, so I was just using this initially as this is where we're going to store all of our content for the up and coming posts. And then we'll feed it, maybe export it as a CSV and feed it into buffer. Uh, but then when we looked through Zapier, Zapier has got this really cool uh, ability to um, take the data, but then trigger the action in the future at a set time. So as long as I'd set what time I wanted that tweet to go out, the tweet would automatically go into Zapier straight away, but then Zapier would delay it until that date and that time and then release yeah. the tweet. Oh, um, I, I, I need to check out that video. <laughs> it's I really need, cool. I need to build this, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it just made it easier. So obviously Airtable on its own is great for data management, yada, yada, yada. But the, the fact that they integrate so well with Zapier means that the, there is lots of extra power in there as well. Um, and we're using Airtable with WordPress and with QuickBooks so that we've got that whole kind of combined um, uh, element going on. And we're also receiving a lot of data in from our clients nowadays through Airtables because it's easier it's just to get it all straight in. Um, and uh, yeah, and we're also displaying lots of data to our clients this way with private links, with passwords associated so that no one can see it other than the client so that they can just see what's going on with their project or access data quickly. So yeah, big lover of it, mate. Yeah. Seems like that. I think that that's a good way to wrap it up, though. I don't yeah. want to take up much more of your time here. No and worries. I think Thanks, we, we could probably talk for like the next five hours about Airtable because it's so powerful and vast. Um, so for everybody watching this, I recommend you just get your hands on Airtable. Think about what you can do to start with an easy base structure, like a very simple thing to replicate in Airtable. Mm -hmm check out Zapier and just take it from there, I guess. Absolutely. Is, uh, is it Norman something? There's a guy on YouTube. I would recommend people follow him as well. He, he does a lot of Airtable videos if you want to kind of go down the rabbit hole of learning how to use Airtable in more detail. Um, so there's some amazing things that have been built. But for me, data management uh, and for useful tools, Airtable's a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> I love it. So nice one. What, one last question here. Uh, where do people connect with you and find out more about you? Awesome. Just come along to agencytrailblazer.com and you'll find my podcast and you'll find links to the YouTube channel and you'll uh, find links as well to our lovely Facebook group that you can come and hang out with us in. Highly and also group, they can find the us both, can't they, on the Cloudways Mavericks call every second Tuesday of every month. Yeah, like today. <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah, which is actually the third Tuesday of this month, but that was only for uh, technical reasons. <laughs> yeah. All, all right, mate. Thanks so much for nice taking one. the time. Take care. Great. And start.